All right, so we just finished The Last of Us episode five. Mm-hmm. You are in emotional wreck, I can clearly see. Mm-hmm. It's been a few minutes, and uh, you still like you've got the the post cry sniffles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I cried a lot. So you seemed as though you had a lot of thoughts. Mm-hmm. So what? How are we feeling? How are we feeling? First of all, I wish I had played the game because at least then I would have been a little bit prepared for that. Yeah. I was very unprepared. I had a feel. I. I knew obviously Henry and Sam can't both survive forever, but I. I thought worst case scenario, one of them dies in this episode. I didn't think they would both die, and I didn't think it would be like that. Mm. That, that was terrible, in my opinion. I mean, the episode was good, but it was terrible. <laughs> like emotionally, that was terrible. Yes. Yeah. Um. First of all, I have words with that bitch, Kathleen. <laughs> Frankly, this is all her fault. They would have never been there. Yeah. If it wasn't for her. And or if she just listened to her brother and forgave Henry. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. She talks about herself like she's this true revolutionary, you know, freeing the people. A, a real revolutionary thinker fighting an oppressive government or an oppressive regime understands that people who are... Uh, coerced into collaborating they're victims with it yes they are victims of the same government yeah she wasn't thinking straight henry played a role in killing her brother and that was all that mattered to her at that point so really, it's not about freeing anybody for her. And she needs to get over herself and stop lying. Because she's not, that's not what it's about. Yeah, I don't think she... She's not filling the shoes of her brother to be the resistance leader. I think she just had a personal vendetta. And the only way to accomplish that was to take the role of the leader of the resistance. She's no, she's no freedom fighter. She's just... She is just... Oh my God. She's I, an apocalypse Karen. I don't like her. She is literally an apocalypse Karen. <laughs> I don't like her. See, last episode, I was like, I'm intrigued. I was like, okay, maybe. And I like Melanie Linsky, you know? Yeah, she's great. Yellow Jacket. Yellow Jacket. She's phenomenal. I also think she was in Two and a Half Men. Oh, I didn't watch that show. Okay. Well. Was that a show? Was that a, what is that? With Charlie Sheen? Okay. I, yeah, I didn't watch that. Okay. Um, I don't like her. Last, last week, I was like, okay, I'm interested. I'm interested to see where this goes. This week, as soon as they showed her interrogating all the people, and then she shot everybody, I was like, "Oh no, I don't like you. I don't like you because you're not you're not about what you say you're about." Mm-hmm. The violent overthrow. Once they explained what, how Fedra was over there, see when they first showed it, I was like, "Damn, I know Fedra is bad, but like this kind of seems like overkill." Yeah. Then they explained later on that like their Fedra was particularly bad, and I was like, "Okay, like I understand a, a bit more now what we're doing here." But the citizens that she killed, I was like, "No, no." Like, medicine is like a valid reason. Like, I'm sorry. Like, life-saving medicine. Like, I understand. I get it. I understand that there are some people that are like, the cause is the cause, and it's worth whatever you have to lose, right? Like, whatever you have to give up to to overcome, it's worth it. And I respect that. But I don't think that you can expect everybody to have that same mindset, especially when you don't have you have less to lose like that's a child Mm -hmm. you know like she would have looking at how she treated how she treated everybody who played a role in her brother's death she would have given somebody up to save her brother yeah i could see that she just never had to she just ended up in a situation where that was not that she didn't have to do that it's the look of the draw right there for her so I don't like her at all. And I don't respect her. And I don't care 
I have a feeling some people are going to be like, girl boss, girl boss Kathleen, she took... No. Oh, I hope there's no one saying that because that would be stupid. <laughs> that would be stupid. <laughs> She's not a girl boss. She's an idiot. When her soldier, whatever, you know, like second rank, was telling her about the bloater. We saw in the previous episode, the ground was shaking. And she... Think. Think. What's more important right now? A human or a bloater? Let, let's, let's use our brains. Because what that thing did in that episode could have been avoided if you had found some other way to deal with him. Also, fact is, Joel and Ellie are getting away, so we won't know. But that town is done. Yeah, they're full that, of that, clickers now. That town is turned. done with. They, they've all turned. <laughs> it's over for them. They're either dead or they turned, yeah. Yeah, it's over for them. No, I, I, yeah, I don't respect her. And I, and, oh God, that was really painful. I'm really sad. The clickers move frighteningly fast. Yeah, they're very scary. When and, they came out of that thing, I was like, yeah. Uh, see, that's the, that, this is what terrifies me about these Zom- not really zombies, but these clickers versus like other post-apocalyptic creatures, zombies, they not only move fast, they move in droves. When the ground first broke, it felt like hundreds of them were coming out yeah, at full like force. Yeah. Like, oh my god. Yeah, it's... Terrifying. It was terrifying, but also I was kind of like, this is good for us. <laughs> like, this is what you get. <laughs> I don't care about any of I do not. I don't care about any of those. You, Adrian, you can speak for this. I was literally screaming, get that bitch, Kathleen. <laughs> if you don't do anything else, if you don't do anything else, one of you infected clicker zombie things better get her. <laughs> and they came through for us. And I appreciate that. Now, I do want to talk about Joel in that scene because that, him being like, he's like, I have one job right now. Yeah. And just eyeing Ellie and just, I was like, no, that is insane. Also, his aim is very good. That's the joke from the video game that I've been waiting on. The one who's just like, all right. I'm about this business. I'm going to get this done. I'm about it. You don't want this smoke. I was, I was very impressed. And I, yep. That like you're just seeing like you're just really seeing like the protector in him. It's just like it's it's fully there now. Yeah. He's like, no, no, this is my one job, and if I don't succeed at anything else, I'm gonna succeed at this. Yeah. That was a very intense mm. scene. Um, God, okay, but we have to talk about him reinstating because mm. first of all, what beautiful characters. Yeah. It's such a short amount of time. He's actually not. Uh, death in the video games. Really? Nah, I think that was their way of just trying to be more inclusive. I wonder if that actor is dead. I don't know. Maybe. I'd be interested to know. Um, there, yeah. Well, I mean, I already told you like before we recorded, but I'm like Easter Ray. I'm rooting for everybody black. If you put a black character, this is why, honestly, sometimes, sometimes in these types of shows. I'm like, it's okay with me if we don't have... (laughs) Like, when people were like, put black people in Game of Thrones, I was like, I'm okay, (laughs) honestly, because just terrible... Like, terrible things are going to happen to them, and it's just a lot. Um, I mean, obviously, when they're there, I'm like, I'm glad to see you, and this is nice, but also, like, the emotional attachment is just a bit stronger for me, just naturally. It's interesting, now that I'm watching... And I don't think that I, I didn't fully grasp this when I was playing the video games. But I mean, Joel says it in the previous episode where, like, you, you find something to fight for, you fight for family. If your family's gone, what's the point of even being here? I mean, we saw that with Bill and Frank. You're there for your family now. And if your family is, isn't there, there's no reason, there's no motive, there's no incentive to keep going. You know what I mean? And that feels like a repeating theme that we're seeing through each person. And I mean, it's just, it just sucks that with Henry and Sam, you get the dark reveal of this is what happens to people when they don't have anything to live for. 
Yeah, the juxtaposition between this episode and episode three was heavy for me. Yeah. And in a way, it's like, it kind of sucks. Because, like, a lot of the... Okay, let me collect my thoughts. Okay. Like, in episode three, we got to see the beauty of finding somebody to live for yeah and the beauty of going out on your own terms Mm -hmm. and it was very powerful because it was these two characters who maybe outside of this scenario would not have been able to find the love that they found in episode five you have another you know another pairing henry and sam who again have something to live for each other and that's like pretty much it but the violence of their deaths and the fact that they didn't get to go out on their own terms is very painful and in the same way that bill and frank's identities added layers to their deaths and their lives henry and sam's identity as to black people added some layers for me because it's like like in the real world a lot of times black men don't get to go out on their own terms you mm-hmm. know so I like and obviously this is not the same and obviously this is not this was not the intention of the creators it's just something that for me as a black viewer sure. I just sort of carry it into the viewing with me yeah. so seeing Henry have to shoot his own brother. It's just I, like it just was awful to me. I understand the necessity for the storytelling, but I just hated it. It's it's sad because you you see the toll that it takes on Ellie afterwards, and it's weird because, I mean, as we were watching, this is no like medical procedure she's trying to do. Like this doesn't work. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of hoping, though. I was like, please. I know. It's, it's just this. It's the innocence of a child, really. Like, again, you see these glimpses of their humanity. And for a child, that's a very childlike thing that they would want to do in that moment, you know? And that makes it more sad because when Ellie gives Sam the hug, you see the camera sort of focus in on her. And there's even some doubt there, obviously. Knows, yeah. You know? Yeah, that, that was rough. It's also just the everything that it would have it would have almost been better if she had told them and they could have just you know done it you know it it was like the fa- like him attacking her and Henry having to see that and then like the you know the hastiness of it and just like the you know just every like everything There's just evil. happened yeah. yeah it just made it so much worse It's, it's rough it's tough, because, man. again, we continue to see the different sides of love. And when you, in that sort of world, you can see what it can do to a person when you lose the only thing that keeps you going. And what's more interesting about this is just as Joel has the he's Joel has taken the identity of the protector right that's the same thing with Henry losing Sam means he's lost his whole purpose like he's a protector also probably not as good as like Bill or Joel but nonetheless he's got something to protect now you take that away and not only is it taken away he had to be the one to take it from himself that's rough that's terrible. And it's also the fact that they made a point of letting us know he's never done that before. He's never hurt somebody before. Oh, God. And the first person he had to do was his brother. Whoa. That is dark. Oh, my God. The minute it happened, I was almost like, just do it. Because it's like, like, I knew Henry was going to kill himself. And I was like, I'm okay. Because it's like, it just. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. It'd be terrible to go on after that, honestly. I don't. 
I, 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 these episodes lay such a foundation for what's to come in this show. So the same way we're like putting a pin in episode three, I also want to put a pin in episode five in relation with Henry and Sam and how you will see similarities with Joel and Ellie later on in the show in terms of when you are that tied to an individual you don't always make rational decisions when you're when you love a person that deeply i think the rationale is the love because what i mean that kind of like what other rationale is there really yeah that's true i think that's just it. it's like this is this is the this is the reason why i'm here so the only rational thing to do is to do whatever i can to save this person yeah and that's the only thing that makes sense because that's what else is there really we What's the name of the guy that made this show? Because I got words, okay? I'm upset. The, the video game? Yeah. Neil Druckmann. Neil Druckmann? <laughs> if I ever... <laughs> if I ever lay eyes on you, <laughs> you and me will have words, okay? Because you did not have to do that. That was rough. And he was... That kid who played Sam was very endearing. He Adorable. was such a good job. Adorable. Oh my gosh. He did such a good job. He's so cute. Yeah, this this one was rough. This one was rough. They're uh, they're really like setting the tone. They're like letting us know like these are the stakes. This is the world. This this is the types of things that happen. I, it's hard to not love Ellie more in this episode. It, it, she didn't even hesitate. She just wanted to help the kid. Yeah. Oh, that's rough, man. Because she's literally like, here, just just take this blood. Just take this blood. Do you think there's some hints there, though? That, like, maybe it's not as clear cut that even though she's immune, it can be replicated for other people? Maybe. I don't know... Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe, because what would they, what would, whatever, because they're trying to get her to the Fireflies to figure out something. They think she's They the have key doctors there who can make some, some sort vaccine, of apparently, yeah. But, yeah, like, what exactly would Cause remember, that entail, I don't know. Right, in the first episode, the flashback to 1968, the doctor says there are no cures, he never says that mankind, he never says that there aren't instances, there aren't anomalies where someone can become immune, where humanity evolves and someone can become immune. Like, he never says that. He just says cure. And so I'm wondering if, like, this episode could potentially sow doubt in how realistic it could potentially be to take whatever is making Ellie cure like whatever there whatever has made Ellie immune to it maybe it's just something for her and it isn't something that can be replicated for other people maybe it could be that that, that would suck it could also be are they trying to make a cure or are they trying to make a vaccine you know like are they trying to make a thing where like after you've been bitten you can be cured or are they trying to make a thing so that you are protected if you get bit I think they're trying to make people just immune. Like, like Ellie is immune. So then that would, like... So in the case of Sam, then that really wouldn't be, like, a good example because he was already He's already bit. infected, yeah. So that's, like, two different two different things. It's like how we have vaccines for COVID, but we don't have, like, a cure for if you get it. You yeah. Know? At this point, I'm like, don't meet nobody else. Y'all just need to go on this journey, just the two of y'all, because I at least know for a while you guys will be okay. Just just the two, just no one else. Uh, you don't need to encounter any other beloved people, okay? Let's yeah. just keep it, let's keep it simple. That's rough. Because this is not, I can't go through this again. That was, that was crazy. That mm -hmm. was really crazy. That was really crazy. I don't know if I have any more thoughts this this was just a very heavy episode um also i think craig mason kind of proved his point of like 
these violent regimes, they never really end better than what came before. And you you kind of see that. But yeah, the, the circumstances played out in a very unique way, but I think the point is th- there's always going to be something that will keep violence if your form of overthrowing a government is that kind of violent. I just, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think we can at least say that what Kathleen created was better because what they were saying, what he said about um, their Frederick was that they were like raping and torturing people. and like. Yeah, it's true. And he also said, like, your brother was a good man, but like nothing changed when he was in charge, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think like a peaceful like peaceful protest, I think it only works when you have some sort of um civility in place. And like they didn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. Um like I don't know because or when you can appeal to people's humanity which in a, in a post-apocalyptic world that's probably hard because mm-hmm. like I don't even because I don't want to use the word civil because in the case of like the civil rights movement which was like largely peaceful it's not like things were really civil right like they were lynching black people yeah. and like they like put dogs on them and mm-hmm. fire hoses but they were able to appeal to people's humanity. Yeah. Um, and to people's money. Actually, it was the money. That's really what it was. They messed with their pockets. You, you can't ever rely on the good conscience of, of like the oppressive yeah. structure. That's never going to change anything. But if you're under a government, like in a post-apocalyptic world where like... All of those, all, like, there's just, there's nothing to appeal, you know, like, you can't hurt their money, you can't hurt that, like, that's not, you don't, you don't have any systems, there's, there's no, mm-hmm. right, all you have is this one violent, overarching mm. power, and you're not going to be able to appeal to them in any way, you don't have anything that they want, you don't have any, yeah, you've got, you've got no, you don't have any shit. sway, right, like, you, you don't, you can't, you have no impact on them in any way, yeah. So, I don't, I don't know if there was another way. But I do think that a distinction should be made between the people making the decisions and the people being coerced into helping them. Yeah. And I They're just, victims of this whole thing, too. Yeah. Henry's like, my brother's got leukemia. And instead of just, like, giving it to Henry... They force him to be a rat for the most part. Yeah. That you can't keep you can't keep that over his head. The evil is not Henry giving up your brother. The evil is Fedra withholding life saving medication. Yeah. Like the <laughs> evil is Fedra forcing Henry to only have bad choices. Yeah. You know? Because you shouldn't have to do that right. in order to get something that exactly. you need to live. Yeah. Definitely feels like, in a very sad and tragic way, Ellie grew up. Because mm-hmm. she's the one that's like, all right, Joe, let's go. And he's still kind of trying to process the moment. Yeah. That's sad. She's seen too much to be considered a kid anymore. I mean, no matter how much trauma you're exposed to, like, you're still a child. Yeah. But, um... She's not gonna process it. I don't think. I think she's just gonna... She's like... You know, like, yeah. It's not gonna bode well for her. Moving forward, I don't think. Um... Those are our final thoughts. Any anything else you want to add? No, honestly, I'm honestly just very overwhelmed. Yeah, <laughs> we're still just kind of processing that. <laughs> I get it. 
All right, well, let us know what you thought of episode five, and we look forward to hearing from you all. Thank you all again. We'll see you next time.